And I'm Hammer. And we are two Get Outside. <laughs> We're currently traveling the world for two years looking for a new place to live, if you guys don't already know. We spent a month in Egypt and we went to a ton of different places, but we spent a majority of our time in Cairo as my family lives there. So we wanted to spend a lot of time visiting family and catching up, being that I haven't been back in 10 years. What we wanted to do for today's video is talk about where you should stay in Cairo, how you can get around the city, some things that you can do, what the culture is like there and why you're going to love it there. We're going to try to keep this short and sweet and give you guys as much information as possible in this limited amount of time. Let's kick things off with where to stay. So for where to stay in Cairo, you have three major options. Giza, which is right by the pyramids, Old Cairo, which is by the Cairo Museum, Tahrir Square, some of these very famous places, and New Cairo, which is a very modern, bustling part, but it's not necessarily very close to all of the sites that you'll want to see as a tourist. Our recommendation <laughs> is to stay in West Al Balad. West Al Balad is downtown, and I have personally stayed all over Cairo. My family lives all over, so I've had to travel to each part, brought literally dragged Ruthie to each part of Cairo so she saw everything. The one that's most near and dear to my heart is West Al Balad, not just because my grandparents live there but also because it's the easiest to get around from there it's downtown you can catch a go bus from there to Luxor, Dahab, Hergada any place that you want to go to from Egypt it's just easy to get around from that one spot and the Cairo Museum is there Old Cairo is there Khan Khalili and El Hussein which is the marketplaces they're walking distance from there it's just really, really easy to get there. The only thing that's like a little bit further out is the pyramids, but you don't necessarily want to stay by the pyramids. It is a poor neighborhood and there isn't much to do there, to be quite honest. So if you want a view of the pyramids and you don't want much else besides that, then stay there. But what I would recommend is if you want to see all of Cairo and the environment as a whole, definitely stay in West Al Balad. Getting around Cairo. There is a metro in Cairo. I'll just knock that off your list right now because pretty much everyone that we know that's from Cairo says not to use it. Uber and Kareem are two really, really good options. Kareem is like the Middle East version of Uber, so you can use that also. They're super cheap. They have a set price, so you don't have to worry about negotiating for a taxi or anything. Taxi also is a really good option if you don't have cell service or something like that, but then you have to work a little bit harder to negotiate for a good price for your taxi. Uber was our main mode of transportation when we were in Egypt, and just to give you guys an idea of like how much it was, from West Al Bella to the pyramids, which is about a 45 minute ride, it was about four to five dollars. In terms of SIM cards, we actually got a SIM that gave us 30 gigabytes of data, 200 minutes in Egypt, and 50 minutes international calling, so we were able to call back home, and it was $25, so. It's so cheap. The next thing we wanna cover is the general culture, and culture is uh, pretty general, because it covers <laughs> a lot of things. But what I wanna to touch on is food, the people. Language, how you should act when you're in Cairo and what you can expect from everyone else who's from yeah, Cairo. Yeah, so in terms of food, Egypt has a ton of amazing food, but you do, you do have to know where to look for it. A lot of the places within the tourist centers may not necessarily be the best restaurants. They may not necessarily be the most authentic restaurants. There was that great uh, Egyptian food, like fast food restaurant that's really famous. It's like a big chain. It's called Gad, yeah. G-A-D. That one has really great authentic Egyptian, Egyptian food. Yeah. yeah, Egyptian breakfast especially. And it's it's really delicious, really authentic, and very cheap also. Yeah, we have a ton of recommendations in terms of food on our blog. So rather than rambling on about like which types of places to go to and get food, check out our blog. Just to give you guys an idea of like types of food that you should definitely get is kushari, tameya, which is falafel, ful. Fish. fish is really, really big in Egypt yeah. and grilled fish 
incredible, so delicious if you can get it in Cairo. If you're going to Alexandria, definitely get it there. Also, Mashi is really good. Mashi. And we got really spoiled because we got to eat all of his grandma and his aunt's cooking. Yeah. But Mashi's really, really good. And the rice today. is especially special, mm -hmm. uh, in, especially special in Egypt. So definitely get rice when you're there too because it does taste very good. And desserts, desserts. People in Egypt have a huge sweet oh, tooth. So yes. you can get kunafa, you can get more kunafa, you can get Amu Ali, you can get uh, Ruzbil Laban. There's like a ton of desserts that I can say, but explaining them all here would take like a day. So just check out our blog. You guys will find more than enough information there. And one of the best bakeries is also in West El Balad. It's called El Abd. Yeah, right? El Abd. It is in West El Balad. This specific one has a ton of desserts there and so they're all super good. good. And they have these amazing cakes that they make, especially for the holidays that are like really big and they're like maximum equivalent to like 10 US dollars or something like yeah. that. So they're so cheap. In terms of like eating a meal, just to give you guys an idea of how much it costs. We just got all that breakfast for how much? Really $4. And all of this Coke right here in our hands was $2. $2.50. <laughs> Welcome to Egypt. Wow. Let's hop on over to people. I think the people is something that I like to focus on the most when I go to Egypt because that is what makes a country. A country could have everything like landscapes and food, but the people can really either spoil it or make it even better. And the people in Cairo are actually incredible. Sometimes if you go to a marketplace, you might get overwhelmed because there's a lot of people that are trying to talk to you at once. But the awesome thing is that once you're in conversation with somebody, it's just, it's all smiles. That's all anybody wants to do is smile. They want to see that you're happy to be there. They want to see that you love Cairo and they want to see that you're having a good time so even if even if it's like a vendor and you know they're trying to sell you something it's always about the smile they always it's like it's such a big thing there just showing that you're happy and that you have a warm heart and that like the person you're talking to is the same and they they're happy they have a warm heart like no matter what it's just it's a really really cool environment to be in in terms of what to wear in Egypt for guys it's pretty easy because you don't necessarily have to cover up anything as long as you're not going into a mosque if you're going into a mosque I definitely recommend to wear uh, jeans and you can still wear a shirt as long as you cover your knees you're good to go and you can go into wherever you want to for girls especially when you're in Cairo this doesn't necessarily apply to the whole country I'd recommend wearing long pants or skirt and something that's not super form-fitting so that you know your butt's not out or like showing or anything um, and then also especially when you're going to religious places you want to make sure you have a jacket with you to wear as like long sleeves and uh, a scarf so that you can wrap around your head if you don't have all those things the mosques are really really great there they give you like a robe that you can wear to cover everything in case you don't have it and it's nothing to be embarrassed about in this mosque in old cairo i wasn't prepared to go there because i didn't know that we were going to go there that day uh, we, i surprised her yeah a lot was going on at once so i had short sleeves and even though i had a scarf to wrap my hair in i didn't have anything for my arms they have these robes there that you can just put on so that you can be respectful when you're there and it's nothing to be ashamed of i was definitely embarrassed at the time because i was like oh shoot I'm being so disrespectful, but it's really like they understand that as tourists, we're not always going to be prepared in that way. But in general, walking through the streets as a woman, you're going to get a lot less attention if you are covering yourself up more. It's not that difficult and people worry about the heat a lot and they're like, oh man, I have to cover up, but it's so hot. But especially in Cairo, even when it was like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I didn't notice it that much. And I would wear just like a long flowing skirt and a nice shirt. And then I would just bring around a jacket and a scarf just yeah. in case we'd go somewhere and it was no problem at all. If you do wear less, it's okay, but people will be staring at you a lot more and you're gonna feel a lot more uncomfortable. Okay, quick <laughs> second. That. Hey, we're gonna be posting a lot of videos about Egypt and travels from all over the world. Right now we're actually in Turkey as we're filming this, so yeah. you'll get to see a lot of Turkey videos. So like and subscribe if you wanna see stuff like this from yeah. everywhere around the world. All right, she's just huge in, in the Middle East. You'll, you'll find it in literally any Arab speaking country that you go to. We're currently in Turkey. It's here in Turkey as well. My personal favorite is in Egypt. I think they just prepare it super, super well. And it's definitely way more affordable than anywhere else in the world. I think it's about two US dollars. She's just pretty much like hookah, like water vapor. You could get a bunch of different flavors. You can get it prepared in a lot of different ways depending on where you go. In the On the cheaper end, you get it for two to three dollars. On the more expensive end, you can get it to five to seven dollars. And what makes it more expensive is they might put the tobacco in a big fruit, like a pineapple or 
um, an apple or whatever fruit that you decide and then they put the tobacco inside and it just makes uh, smoking it a lot better because it keeps the juices in. Other places will put ice in it so that way the, the smoke is a lot smoother, it doesn't affect your lungs as much. Shisha is definitely something that you cannot miss when you're in Egypt so we have a ton of recommendations. Check out the blog if you want to know more but Shisha, definitely get it. And also tea and coffee are huge in the Middle East in general and especially in Egypt. Coffee, a lot of times they'll serve as Turkish coffee. Turkish coffee is just a really like dense, strong form of coffee and it comes like in a little espresso size. Tea is even more popular I think than coffee. You can get tea literally anywhere and it's the cheapest thing. Like it's cheaper than water when you go to a restaurant. You just order some tea and it comes in like this nice little size glass and it's hot and you sugar in it. You never have your tea without sugar when you're in the Middle East. Always put some sugar in yeah. it. In general, cost of living in Egypt, super, super cheap. In general, whatever it is that you buy in the US, it's going to be cheaper in Cairo. Just to give you guys an idea, we spent a month there and we went to Lux in Deheb, we kind of balled out in Cairo and we spent about $1,200. So about $600 per person for a whole month in Egypt. Hostels also are like pretty cheap there. Our friends who visited um, for, I forget how many nights it was, they, they booked like 10 nights in West Labelad and it was about 200 US dollars for uh, one room with two beds. So $100 And a bathroom. Person. So it's not like a hostel yeah. room, it's actually like a hotel and it's yeah. in downtown West Labelad. So. Yeah. Pretty solid. In terms of sites, the sites don't cost a lot of money. Like This is Pyramids, Cairo Museum, Old Cairo, everything. And then Khan Khalili and the markets. So many things are just free. Yeah. Unless it's a, a museum ticket or like, like the Pyramids ticket, pretty much everything is negotiable. The Nile Cruises, we got it for 15 pounds. No, 10 pounds a person for a 15 minute cruise That's around the Nile. Cents. Yeah, and you're doing it with a lot of locals and they put on music and lights and you're as close to the water as you can get and everyone's just like dancing and enjoying their time. So definitely would recommend doing that while you're there. The last thing that we wanted to talk about Cairo is the most important one for you guys if you're visiting is what do you do when you're there? There's a lot that you guys can do while you're there. Pyramids are the number one thing that everybody goes to visit while they're in Egypt. That obviously costs money and we, we went over how much that costs while you're there, but you can do additional things. You can also get a camel ride or a horse ride. You would want to negotiate that. Usually you can get the camel rides as low as like 200 to 250 pounds and they bring you to the panoramic view. Horse rides, you can get it for 100 to 150 pounds. So definitely recommend that you do that while you're there because you cannot walk to the panoramic view. It will be way too hot and <laughs> and you will be dead by the time you get there. So yeah. take a horse or a camel and the panoramic view is definitely worth seeing while you are there. At least now in 2019, there's so few people that are visiting. If you wanna see Egypt and have it to yourself, now is a great time to do it because I really think tourism is gonna to start bolstering up again very soon. Yeah, and in terms of any sites, by the way, get there very, very early. Egypt is hot, regardless yeah. of when you go, it is very, very hot. So try to get there as early as possible, not just to beat the crowds, but to beat the heat. So right as we were talking about overheating in Egypt, our camera overheated from the sun. So we moved over to this spot. So let's jump right into Khan Khalid and Hussein. They are the marketplaces in Egypt. They are one of the oldest markets in the entire world and they are spectacular. This is a place that you absolutely cannot miss when you're in Egypt if you're looking for any knickknack like any type of souvenir scarves anything you name it go there you can bargain for anything that you're looking for and make sure that you bargain any price that they give you within the marketplaces cut it by at least a half if not a third because when you are foreign trust me they will drive up the price like crazy have a price in mind and stick to it towards the end when you're there I definitely just recommend walking around the streets and taking in the history because that marketplace has been around for hundreds of years. So for hundreds of years before you, there was people who were going there and buying their spices, buying their goods, and it just has so much history and you could feel it there. You could really, really feel it. And one of the oldest coffee shops in the entire world is there. It's called El Fashawi. I'm not gonna tell you guys where this fly is killing me. I'm not gonna tell you guys where El Fashawi is because I think it's better to just like search for it and find your own route and get lost in the markets as you look for the perfect coffee there. Hussein is in the same area, so Khan uh, Khalili and Hussein, they're both marketplaces essentially connected to one another. So as you're walking through Khan Khalili, you make your way over to Hussein and vice versa. A different type of marketplace is Moaz Street or Shadamoaz. Shadamoaz. They also have a ton of trinket shops and shops for like food and drinks 
clothing and dresses and all types of clothes, trinkets, souvenirs, like pretty much anything you could think of. But it's so much more of just like a fun, chill cafe spot. So when you walk around, it's super crowded and it's situated in a really, really old part of town, just like um, Canapili, except it is so much more vibrant, full of people walking on their motorcycles, even driving. And there's so much going on and it's a great spot to just go grab some food, grab some coffee, have a shisha and just relax with your friends. You could stay out there until like six o'clock in the morning, swear it never sleeps there. People are out and about and like yelling and talking and laughing all night long. It's less touristy than Khan Khalidi and Hussein, so if you're looking for something more local, definitely go there and check it out. The next thing we want to cover is the Citadel. The Citadel is incredible. It is huge. It's a massive mosque on top of a hill and once you're there, you could see Cairo. You can never see Cairo clear as day because there is always smog above the city, so Sadly. it is the best view considering the smog. So definitely go up there, check out the mosque. It is one of the oldest mosques in all of Cairo as well. There's not just that one mosque there, there's another mosque to the side, which I thought was even better. The only bad thing that I would say is that it is full of tourists. There's not many tourists who go to Egypt, but this spot definitely was full of tourists. So what I recommend to you guys is when you're going up the hill to the Citadel, there is a mosque that is within the Citadel grounds. It's towards the right hand side. So check that one out. There's literally nobody there. And I thought it was actually cooler than the Citadel itself. The last thing we're gonna talk about is Old Cairo. <laughs> and Old Cairo is really cool because it has a mix of all different religions and all different really, really old buildings with a lot of history. Um, the ones that we went to were the Ben Ezra Synagogue, the St. Sergius Church, I think it's called, and also the Hanging Church, and the Mosque. Do you remember the name of the Mosque? Uh, I always forget the name of the Mosque, but it was one of the most beautiful mosques that I've ever been to in my whole entire life. Yeah. We'll we say it right here. That's the name of the mosque. <laughs> it's a really cool crossroads from all different walks of life and all different parts of Egypt's history. Each place has its own individual history and story behind it. For example, the St. Sergius Church is really famous because that was a place where Jesus and his family lived at one point to be in hiding when they were hiding from the king who was trying to kill all the babies. The Hanging Church, also you can get walking tours. It's really beautiful. It's situated on top of two big pillars, which is why it's called the Hanging Church. And you can get a free walking tour um, to tell you all about what's inside there and then you it's just recommended you probably want to tip your guide maybe a couple pounds afterwards and the synagogue super beautiful you can't take photos or videos inside just be respectful and just enjoy it look at it with your eyes and listen to it and feel it it's really awesome the best thing about Old Cairo is that everything is free to go inside you can obviously get a tour you can book this in advance and you obviously learn a lot more than we did but I thought it was better to just go there and explore and not have any time limitations just go from place to place and try to learn as much as we can beforehand and also while we are there the last thing that we're gonna cover in this whole video is Ruthie's favorite part the museum the museum I'm not a museum person as someone who's not a museum person I actually wish that I could have stayed all day there that museum is chock full of all types of history. Everything in there is just so cool to see. They have the actual things there, like everything from the past, like all the crazy cool statues. There's just so much history there. And the best part really is, all right, so mummies are cool, right? And you think it's gonna be like, oh wow, I'm gonna see some mummies. But like, you can actually see the hair on Ramses II yeah, or something. Yeah. Like these really famous, Pharaohs. Like you could see their hair and you could see their skin and you could see what they looked like almost. It's just a freaky. Dead people scare me, but this actually didn't scare me that much. And you're not supposed to take any videos in there. Some people sneak videos and don't be that person. Going in the museum makes imagining the history and everything in general like a little bit more tangible because you're seeing it all in front of you. So I definitely recommend going there. I went there two times during this past trip. Both times there was new things that I was able to see and it took at least like three hours to see a majority of the museum you're never gonna see the whole thing because there's a ton of different rooms tucked away and being able to take in all that information in one day is really hard you could also hire a tour guide yeah, in the front yeah. it's not super expensive I think it's about 200 pounds some of his family who's like from Cairo has actually said it's pretty useful to get that tour guide we didn't we didn't have the, the budget for that but it's totally worth it and you just negotiate with them you can negotiate anything in Egypt um so I think that's it yeah I mean there's a ton more that we could speak about in terms of Cairo and I hope that we're not missing a bunch but I hope that this gives you guys enough information to plan your trip and gives you guys all that you need to have the best trip possible 
We love Cairo, we love Egypt in general, and we can't wait to tell you about all the other places that we visited, but we hope this helps you with Cairo. All right, guys, we're gonna enjoy the beach and Antalya for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow along our adventures if you're interested in seeing more tips and tricks and guides for other cities. Peace. Peace. Bye, Ruthie.